So I'm here today with John McCarthy, entrepreneur, coach, consultant, author, a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. renaissance man. John and I recently had this great conversation after John went through trauma-informed care leadership training that Trauma Free World offers. And I just, the conversation was so energized. I just had to ask John to be on camera and, and share some of those stories with me. So John, thanks so much for taking the time to, to join me in doing this. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure. I mean, the trauma-informed care uh, training was the most pivotal part of my year and it's changed the way that I look at trauma, it's changed the way that I look at leadership. And so when we first got uh, introduced to each other, I was very excited about this leadership training because I thought that it's something that I could steward in the organizations that we were consulting in and some of the people that we were guiding. And what I didn't realize is how important it was gonna be for my personal understanding mm. of trauma and how it plays out into me so that I could be a better leader. Mm. Tell me a little bit, John, even how you thought this would be something important for you, how did, how did you decide that trauma training would be important to you as, a, as an entrepreneur, a coach, a consultant? Why even begin? Yeah, well, you know, amidst the last couple of years, we, we've all seen a little bit of change, right? With COVID and, uh, you know, trying to steward businesses and consulting with many other businesses and watching leaders just be paralyzed. And um, what do I do? Uh, one thing that became really evident was that we were all burnt out and we were trying to navigate the tough waters. And what came of that is just this desire to figure out, well, how do I help others? How do I help myself, but how do I help others in this um, burnt out, just change oriented environments? And so then when we met, uh, I got excited about what this training could look like. And as I went through it, I first started thinking, wow, this is gonna be something that we can really steward and build into other leaders. But what I realized is what I was carrying. And as the training alludes to, you cannot pour from an empty cup. And I realized how empty I was and how pivotal it was for me to step back and say, yeah, maybe this training is for me to be able to steward and consult with and help lead other leaders. But maybe in this season, this is for me. And when I shifted to understand how powerful it could be in my own personal walk and how I could better understand trauma in my life, it gave me the ability and the power to navigate the boundaries I needed to put around my life to be healthier and to be a healthier leader so that then I could lead others towards that as well. It's really interesting when we did first talk about this um, hmm. and before we get to talking about how you consult with other businesses, some of those stories, you were really taken to the module in the training about self-care. Right. And we actually spent a lot of time talking about it. What about that? You're talking about how this made a difference in your life. Give us a, maybe an example or how that really resonated with you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I'm a type A doer. And <laughs> yes. uh, if you're, you're listening to this and you're a type A doer, you know that you may prioritize rest, but it's probably not something that you're great at. And I would have fallen in that camp. And I'm really happy to tell you that post this training, I'm not in that camp. I understand what rest and restoration looks like for me so that I can be balanced in my pursuit of the healthy relationships at home and at work. And this is a passion of my life is figuring out how to integrate our best home life, our best life outside of work with our work life. And I think it's uh, kind of the word that we use around, around that definition is purpose. And I think the more that we as leaders in this world can figure out the balance, we can live out our purpose. And so through the self-care module, I learned that there's seven levels of rest. And this was completely unique to me because I would have thought sleep meant rest. Mm -hmm. And now I know that there's such a more depth to the word rest and I'm embracing a self-care plan for myself that truly has me rested and I feel it in all aspects of my life and I know that there's testimony from my relationships hmm. if my wife were sitting in this chair she would say that guy's healthier that guy's kinder to me more often my kids would say the same thing so it's just so fascinating that I would have embraced this training thinking that it was for maybe business and leadership but its effects on my life have been reaching all components oh, I love that and and before we move on how has it perhaps made you a, a better leader in, in business or a better consultant? Just, it could be about self-care or it could be about any, any part of the training. Yeah. 
Well, I have been aware of how uh, trauma in our lives, and it doesn't need to be this catastrophic trauma. Mm, I think that's yeah. been one of the greatest learnings for me, is to understand that we all um, experience trauma in some form or fashion. And I, previous to this training, just kind of um, devalued the trauma in my life. I didn't see it there. And so now that I've been watchful for what is it that I'm experiencing that's trauma and how can I self-regulate, how can I uh, have greater self-awareness about that, um, it's given me the ability and, and really the authority to, to recognize it in the workplace. And so as a consultant, as a guide, as an author, as a coach and, and stewarding organizations that do that, I'm now seeing the effects of trauma, the behaviors that in the workplace we often say that's a performance issue or you know we need to discipline for this mm -hmm. and and being able to uh, lean into leadership and policy and process about let's take a more empathetic approach as to the root cause of these behaviors mm -hmm. and man i'm telling you that is empowering if we want to see a work world that's really meeting people where they are and start to create healthy organizations that can be catalytic in this world, we need to understand trauma in a greater way. And this training was just so important for me to do so. You, when we talked before, you had mentioned, you know, the, the big thing in business right now, a lot of your consulting uh, is around um, retaining the best talent yeah. and attracting the best talent. Mm. And you mentioned that this was really important uh, in your lens of how that now works a little bit. So. Tell me a little bit about that, about retaining and attracting talent. Yeah, well, it's a neat, neat where we find ourselves as organizations, um, with organizations that want to go to the next level of retention and change the way that they understand the psychology of work because it is dramatically shifted. And so many organizations are operating in old paradigms of employee motivation. And um, I believe that trauma and self-care and empathy are the next and new norm of motivation, retention, and the psychology of work. Mm -hmm. And so when we've walked with organizations, what we've been able to do, thanks to the training, is we've been able to identify areas where companies can literally come alongside their employees in a more empathetic posture to meet them where they are, not just in work, but also in life to explore goals that their employees might have inside and outside of work, and to create constructs that would help them retain and motivate better. And that has been really revelatory mm -hmm. for a lot of organizations, and quite frankly, it's gonna give them a big hand up in this thing we call the great resignation, to re recruit and retain because they're truly employers of choice. Yeah, you, there's a great story you told me about an employer mm -hmm. you were consulting with you use this phrase called, uh, really it's about helping employees or your team or your organization master their own life, mm. not necessarily just master their work. Yes. Do you remember that conversation we had? And it was, even to me, it, it put into words something that I was trying to, to make succinct, but you made it succinct. Like we, we need to help our people become more masters of their own life. That's right. And you told this really great story uh, I hope you'll retell it about about somebody you were consulting with and what they did to help their employees master their own life. Yeah, and one of the things that this trauma-informed leader training really opened up for me is understanding that we all have obstacles and barriers to being our best self. And so for me, as I've shared, you know, a lot of that had to do with understanding rest and creating boundaries in my life where I could be more balanced and healthy. But as leaders in organizations, we have the opportunity to really dive in with our employees and help them understand what are some of those barriers to my best life at home and at work? And how can the employer partner to reduce some of those barriers. So in this instance, uh, as I was consulting a manufacturing firm, they had previously told me that one of their operational challenges was a language barrier. And so almost 50% of their workforce were Spanish speaking, and they didn't really have the constructs to have a bilingual manager or interpreters on, on site. So we were talking about competency development and retention and mastery and things like that. And one of the line leaders kind of threw up his hands and he said, I don't think there's much competency in development that's going to empower these individuals to be retained. And I said, didn't you previously tell me that 50% of your workforce were Spanish speaking and there's a language barrier? And he said, yeah. And he kind of was like, what does that have to do with competency development? 
We said, well, what if we hold ESL classes where we can then help both sides, the English speakers and the Spanish speakers, learn each other's language so they can have better communication strategies? And he kind of said, yeah, that's good. Because what turned on for him was realizing that if we reduce barriers for these individuals in their life, then we can have a healthier organization. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with trauma-informed leadership. If we can empathetically understand that everyone has barriers to success and barriers to their best life, and we get to be in a position to help empower them to understand what those barriers are, and the next level of leadership, Rob, is to come alongside them and partner with them to reduce those barriers, not just at work, but also in their home life. Right, and, and I loved how as you went through the training, you, be, you began to connect some of those dots even more directly, this idea of building resiliency and mm. competency by understanding the, the real trials, struggles, sometimes trauma in people's lives. As a, as a business leader, that's how you're going to retain uh, your best talent. That's how you're gonna attract your best talent. And you're gonna be missing something if you, if you aren't able to do what the training did for you and, and the businesses you consult with, which is to see things through their employees' eyes, the things that they've struggled with or the things that they're trying to overcome. I thought that story about just simply offering ESL was a, a way to be more empathetic, to build resilient employees. Mm. And, uh, and, and perhaps even in some instances, there might be some trauma that goes on in their lives that you can build competencies around. And that's not about their best work, that's about their best life, which I really loved how you put together. Well, I, I, that's exactly right. And this is the beauty of the trauma-informed leadership. It's because a lot of organizational leaders are gonna find it to be really intimidating to talk about trauma in the workplace and to think about partnering with their employees where there might be trauma in their past. Mm -hmm. And for good reason, right? We shouldn't all run around thinking that we're trauma experts. And that's not what your training provides. What it does is it opens up awareness of oneself so that then we can be more uh, cognizant of how this applies in an organizational setting and how we can be more empathetic to create constructs of health, both mm -hmm. outside of work and inside of work. Yeah, one of, the, one of the things we really talk a lot about, one of the great fears of business owners is that we're going to ask them or they're going to be asked to be you know, EAP or a, or a trauma mm -hmm. expert or a counselor or HR. And, and that's not what we're really about and that's what you found out through the training. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I mean, w when the rubber meets the road, if we're going to move into this next season of business, and as leaders, we're gonna be great leaders, we need to stop thinking that people in our organizations are uh, commodities. Mm -hmm. That they're a cog in the wheel of our productivity or our profit. And that is what's so prevalent in the work world. And I'm just so excited about the new work world where we can start seeing individuals as individuals and start empathizing and understanding that everyone has a past and we all bring that past mm. to our workplace. Yeah. And the more we as leaders can understand how to create environments where that past is recognized and understood and empathized, the better off our organizations are gonna be. And it's gonna to lead to long-term prosperity. It's really exciting to yeah. have this be a part of it. Yeah, John, thanks so much for joining us. As I said, really energized by our conversation before, and I'm glad we caught a snippet of it on camera together. Thanks a lot, John. Thank you. Yeah.